Hi and welcome back to Bike Speeds. So this week we're going to service this giant TCR. We're going to be sorting out the headset bearings on this. They were a little bit gravelly. We're going to clean up this rusty drivetrain. You can see here how it's got very wet at some point and it's just browned off and especially around the wheel with the centrifugal spinning of the wheel when it was wet and rusty. It's, it's spun out a lot of dirt debris on this bike. We're also going to sort out this rear derailleur cable. You can see how that outer is broken up there. We're also going to sort out a puncture in the rear wheel. This was actually flat when it came in. So we're going to sort that out, put new sealant in there, remove some debris from this tire and just explain a little bit about what we do with the tubeless tire. So you can see here the chain doesn't need replacing. It's actually not that badly worn. I think this chain had got wet during a ride and had sprayed out the resulting debris of that rust on the chain. And it's probably a one ride that's caused a lot of this to come onto this bike and then with the puncture he's probably stopped riding it allowed it to dry out on the bike and that's caused a few of the issues that we've got so you can see here i'm having to lever off some of the teeth on the cassette it was quite rusty itself you can see there how that's browned off that will actually clean up lovely as we do the bike but i had to just lever those off and what we'll do we'll lubricate the hub itself before we put the cassette back on and that will aid that in the future again you can see this browned off dirt and water on this derailleur so we'll put that through an ultrasonic cleaner and clean that part up and we're going to get everything off this frame because this is a detail on the frame that we're doing on this bike so even the bottle cages come off for this one so that we can really clean this and get this this frame absolutely popping out so front derailleur off as well again you can see there a little bit of debris on that one chain set off the idea of taking the chain set off during one of these type of rebuilds is that I can then really feel those bottom bracket bearings and see how they're feeling in my fingers and how they're sounding when I spin the chain set itself and make sure that it doesn't need bottom bracket bearings, which in this instance, they were absolutely fine. So off comes the brakes as well. I actually removed the thumb adjuster as I took that off because it just makes it so that I won't need to replace the cables by taking an end off and causing fraying issues with the cables. So you can see here, taking out the thumb adjuster, removing the brake itself from the bike, but leaving the thumb adjuster on the end of the cable again like i say just help me with the, the rebuild process we are replacing this rear derailleur cable because of that damaged outer so i'm just putting in a couple of cable guides into the frame as i remove that cable because that will make my job easier putting in a new cable in through the frame being internal routed as it is so i'm going to do this straight away because when i'm actually detailing the bike it's actually easier to get the cables in so that i don't catch any of those outers that i've put in those guides that I put through the frame. If I caught one of those whilst washing down or pulled one out, it's just going to make my job a whole lot harder when it comes to rebuild. So got that new cable through the frame before we start that process. And then we're now stripping everything down, deciding what's going to go through the ultrasonic cleaner and what's not. We don't put everything through. Things like pedals with power meters or cadence sensors, the arms themselves won't go through the, the degreaser, but we may put the chain rings as in this case through. So everything gets through the ultrasonic cleaner. That's a water soluble degreaser. So this is what we're now doing, washing these parts off, ready for re-lubricating. So all these parts have been through the ultrasonic cleaner and we're now just washing that off just to make sure that they're absolutely spotless. And all that is off before we lubricate and rebuild. We've actually hit a milestone, a little mini milestone really, 22,000 subscribers. We noticed that one clocked through in the past week or so. And me and Simon are really, really pleased. We really appreciate you subscribing to the channel and indeed how many people are watching the channel. It never ceases to amaze us the popularity of the channel. Please do subscribe, hit the notification bell and like the video. Drop us a comment in the comments. We do read all the comments. We do enjoy the comments. So make sure you drop us a comment, a like and subscribe to the channel. So we've just finished up the cleaning process. And as you can see, the rust was removed in the cleaner. So we'll dry these off. Now we're at the stage where I'm lubricating the parts that I've put through the ultrasonic cleaner. A lot of these parts don't necessarily need lubricating. They're almost self-lubricating, like this with the bush inside the jockey wheel. But it's just good practice to lubricate pivot points and things like that. I'm using a little bit of Loctite on these axles for the jockey wheels themselves. The Loctite will stop that ever coming undone. Obviously, there's no bolt or spring washer on the back of that, so you need some way of stopping that ever working loose, and you don't want your chain or your jockey wheels ending up inside your wheel, so that's why we use a little bit of Loctite there. Then we lubricate things like the pivot points of the derailleur. We grease the spring of the derailleur itself just to stop that corroding and getting wet. Again, on the front derailleur, pivot points, springs. We're just making sure they're nicely coated and covered because 
it just stops that corrosion working deep into those parts in the future again it's future proofing your servicing and just making sure everything's lubricated nicely you can really feel the difference when you lubricate these parts as to the way they actuate and the way they operate so it's quite an important part of our service same with the skewer a little bit of general purpose grease on the skewer itself a little bit of copper slip on the threads just to really make that work and make it not stick inside the wheel and then we're going to rebuild the chain set as well so i like to put a little bit of grease on the chain set and then wipe that through and wipe it off it will just stop the chain rings bonding to that pedal arm in the future it just makes future servicing easier to strip these parts down as i do them maybe two three four times in the future it will just help me with the strip down process with nothing corroding and bonded together so we've got all our parts now ready and then we now sort out these headset bearings the bearings you can see here a little bit of rust on the bottom bearing it was mainly the bottom bearing that was faltering the balls with inside that race were hard and still and they got rusty and it was very gravelly to the touch there was a bit of movement in there you can see the rust on this so it just needed those new headset bearings really to make it a more joyous ride you wouldn't be able to ride a bike with no hands where the headset bearings are gone now there are times when you need to maybe sort problems out with your clothing or, or your nutrition where you may take both hands off so it's important to make sure that your headset bearings are flowing nicely and the bike isn't tramming down the road where it's catching bearings and, and not steering nicely so i do put a little bit of grease on the fittings themselves because although these are sealed bearings it will just stop them sticking this bike actually had a cracked stem, so we had to refit a new stem, which could have saved the rider from a really serious accident. Grease on the bottom bearing also, and there's actually a little O-ring inside this cap, so I put a little bit of silicon on there, just to help that go over the steerer tube just there, and then on go the spacers. So that's the headset rebuilt with new bearings and a new stem, which felt lovely. Now, this is the tubeless tire. You can see here it was leaking from this little mark and the key with tubeless tires is to remove the debris that's causing the puncture. And there we have a massive flint in there, so the rubbers of the tire couldn't close fully, which meant it was leaking out. So we took the debris out, we topped up the sealer with brand new sealant, 60 millilitres in this one as it's a road tire, put in a new valve core here, so that we're not using the original one, we're replacing that with a new one, and then reinflate the tire, and this should be good to go. So once we've done that, you can see you've got a little bit of sealant popping out, but we'll drop that tire around to the bottom of the frame when we stand it. That will allow that to clog up inside the tire and that should stop any problems with punctures moving forwards. So now we're working with the bike frame itself. We're washing it down. As you can see here, we're using a nice soft bristled nylon brush because it won't scratch the frame and it's just nice and soft on everything and we'll work in between areas that you can't necessarily get to with a rag and then we dry this frame off with a nice brand new microfiber towel to draw all that water off so that the frame is completely dry and then we're going to use the auto glim super resin polish this is a lovely creamy polish it produces a lovely shine on a frame like this especially where a frame has been lacquered or has got a gel coating on it it really will make them absolutely shine out as you'll see with this bike Giants actually have lovely paintwork on them and they always shine up nicely. And you can see there the reflection in the light of that frame, how glossy that frame is. The polish really brings it out. But this is the one that will really make this frame pop out and that is the ceramic spray. So again, it's not a glim product that we use. A little square on each tube of the frame, polish it off with a brand new microfiber towel and it absolutely glistened this bike. When you think of that rusty water that was on it, what a huge difference. And now we're just going to wash down the wheel. It's a good time for me to just check things like spokes, make sure that they're all correct and as they should be, just to wipe down the wheel itself, make sure there's no damage that I can see that we may need to address or deal with. And then on this hub, I'm just going to put a little bit of general purpose grease on there before I put that cassette back in. And I must admit, we, we watch these videos through twice or I run them through twice. So I watch the edit and then I do the voiceover. And when I saw that cassette going on there, it just astounds me really what we can achieve with a bit of cleaning and a little bit of time and dedication to these bikes. It absolutely looked like a new cassette on the bike. It's just amazing. I mean, look at the shine on that frame. Just with a little bit of love and attention, we really brought the depth out in the paint. So on goes the chain set. I always talk those up 
same with the front derailleur i always torque these up as i'm building the bike so that i know they're in their final position for adjusting just makes it a little bit easier along the way so we tighten up this pinch bolt and i actually torque this one up first before i put the cap on and before i do this little adjuster here and then put the cap on and that should be absolutely spot on now and torque up the mount again you'll notice on both the radios they check the mount bolts themselves just to make sure they weren't loose and then we've got a new derailleur cable in a new outer here we're using a slightly more flexible one than was on there originally so it shouldn't crack the way that other one did it's a little bit of an issue with the giant bikes there rear derailleur cable will often crack there but i use a slightly different one and hopefully that stops that problem moving forward along the life of the bike so we're getting on the brakes now we've got the nice chain set all on there and the derailleurs are all on there now and so we even lubricate the thumb adjusters on the brakes themselves because again they can get a bit sticky although they actually go into a plastic mount on these which is why i used general purpose grease and not a anti-seize grease it just makes all the difference moving forwards to the way you can adjust and operate your bike with your day-to-day -day running of the bike and, and just minor adjustments that you might need to do you can see the general purpose grease the front brake now goes together and we do adjust the brakes but it's a bit fiddly to do on camera so they're adjusted off camera both front and rear and they were both actuating great so i'm going to bottle cages you notice there i just put a little bit of grease into the holes it's actually easier than putting it on the bolt threads themselves that will work around the threads as we do the bolt up and stop them binding into the frame which is also a tricky problem that frames can have where accessories stick in the frame because of that bolt on goes the chain completely rust free so once everything's on i'll adjust everything up b screw is a common one for me to need to adjust people often put derailleurs onto bikes from factory with factory settings and they need just a little bit of adjustment to really make that actuation of the gears perfect once I've adjusted the brakes, just check that the wheels are spinning nicely with inside the caliper itself. And when I pull that brake, that it's central to the wheel, braking surfaces and brakes evenly on the wheels. And then the final sort of stages of the full service is to now go through the entire bike with a torque wrench just to make sure that everything's right. So we've got the new stem on there, torque up those bolts, make sure that's okay. Pinch bolts, mounts, brake pads, we run right through front to back and just check every nut and bolt we can pedals you saw there that moved a little bit that was a little bit loose this one here look quite loose that's the seat post itself that could drop down if it was loose saddles they're always loose saddles are one of the ones i always do up when i'm servicing bikes saddles are the one i suppose you've got all your weight sitting on there and things can move about come loose so because if that came loose on your ride you could have a problem and spoil the day out so check your saddle if nothing else and then we just lubricate the chain i'm lubricating the rollers of the chain itself not the plates so just making sure that, that chain is nicely lubricated deep in those rollers just to avoid it going rusty again so here are the before and afters we made a big difference to the look of this bike but also the performance what a lovely service lovely polish nice ceramic coating tubeless tires sorted out bolt with the stem sorted out rear derailleur cable sorted out this bike will ride like a dream when he goes out on it for the first time it will be a completely different bike to the bike that came in so i hope you enjoyed this service please do like and subscribe this video if you enjoyed it and we'll see you again next week bye for now